Rejoice. Rejoice. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So we've got our gospel passage here for Matthew, uh, the third Sunday of Advent, Matthew chapter 11. But uh, before we get into it, let's say our prayer, and then we'll, we'll get into the, the word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, well, Lord, we bring to you the things maybe that are occupying our minds the most, uh, things that are distracting us, uh, trying to disturb the peace that you give. We offer those things to you. We pray that you would uh, receive them, that you would bring healing where it is needed, bring wholeness to those who are broken. Fill us all with your Holy Spirit in a fresh way. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. Matthew 11, verses 2 through 11. Here we go. When John heard in prison of the works of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to him with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. All right, so another Sunday, another another gospel passage with John the Baptist. It's, it's a fascinating thing that we have back-to-back -back Sundays that focus on John the Baptist. You know, what other what other person gets such, such uh, screen time, such... Um, yeah, FaceTime, I guess, in the gospel passages. Only Jesus, right? Only Jesus. Um, so anyway, it's, it's fascinating that uh, we, ha we have this. Now, nonetheless, okay, so, so here's what's going on. Okay, so John the Baptist is in prison. Why is he in prison? Well, because we know from the gospels that he, he talks to Herod about Herod's unlawful or illicit relationship that he has with his brother's wife, Herodias. And uh, Herod and Herodias don't like that John is calling them out, so he puts him in prison. And that's where he's at. So now he's in prison, right? Uh, he's hearing the works of the Messiah, of the Christ. Uh, and so what is he doing? He's sending his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Now, this is a fascinating question to me because I've heard a couple of different interpretations of the reason John is, is sending his messengers to ask the question. So I've heard some people suggest that John is sending the messengers because he himself is doubting whether Jesus is the Messiah. Maybe he believed him right away, right? Remember, he preached this message in the desert. One is coming after me who's who's uh, going to baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit and his winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear the threshing floor, you know, all these things. And, uh, and, and so, but now he's, he's seeing that Jesus isn't coming with the fire that he thought he was going to come with. And so he's, he's a little bit, he's wondering, he's doubtful maybe about whether Jesus, and so then Jesus' response is, is for John to, to be strengthened in faith. That's, that's one interpretation. Another interpretation I've heard is that John is, is sending his messengers not for his own sake, but for their sake. Uh, that they're, they're seeing their, their leader, John, be put in prison. And so I could imagine them wondering, gosh, are we sure we're following the right guy here? Like, th this, isn't, this isn't going the way that we thought it would. And so John sends them to Jesus, not to get an answer for John, but, but for them to see Jesus face to face and to hear what Jesus has been doing from the mouth of Jesus. Um, I, I think a person is free to believe either one of those. My tendency is to prefer the second one. Uh, Maybe because I, I, just, I like John the Baptist and I, I don't want to consider him to have doubts of faith. Uh, but, I mean, if, he, if, if it's the first interpretation, that's fine. But, I, you know, it says he had heard of the works of the Messiah. Uh, so maybe, I mean, from my perspective, it seems like he would believe just simply from hearing. But anyway, nonetheless, that's, that's just the first thing. Okay, so, th so then maybe the, the more um, helpful thing for us to consider is Jesus' response. Okay, so Jesus says to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. 
and blessed is the one who takes no offense in me. Where have you heard, think about this for a minute, where have you heard something similar, very similar to what Jesus just responded? Well, in our first reading for this, this Sunday, actually, Jesus, what, what did we hear? When the Messiah comes, what's, what's going to happen? Um, let's see here. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared, then will the lay, lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. You see, that, like, so Jesus, he, he's basically saying, go tell John to read Isaiah 35, right? Like, go tell him to read this. And he adds some extra things in there. So lepers being cleansed, he's referring to Elisha, the prophet, with Naaman, <clears throat> the Syrian, who's cleansed of his leprosy. Uh, the dead are raised, speaking of, a, uh, referring to a passage in Isaiah 26. Uh, but nonetheless, Jesus is, is saying like, no, 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 go check your scriptures and see, this is, this is what I'm doing, right? And so <clears throat> you'll see in the scriptures that this is what the promised Messiah was going to do. And this is what I'm doing. So if you're wondering if I'm the guy, whether it's, whether it's John wondering or whether it's the messengers of John wondering whether, whether I'm the guy, Jesus is like, go read your scriptures and then check it out. Check it out. Like I'm, I'm the guy, right? I am the Messiah. He says this, you know, not so direct, d directly, but, but nonetheless, right? And, and this is the question, right? The one who is to come. Who is the one who is to come? Well, it's not just that it's the Messiah. It is the Messiah. But remember, Isaiah 35, what does it say? Here is your God. Here is your God. Right? Like, it's not just that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, but that, that he is God himself coming to do these things, to perform these actions, revealing that he is he's coming to, to save his people from their sins. Uh, it's, it's great. Okay, so then, as they were going off, <clears throat> Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind, right? A reed swayed by the wind. Someone who is who just kind of is so easily swayed from his opinions uh, to, to not really take a firm foundation. It makes me think, actually, of the, the second reading from St. James, where he says, uh, make your hearts firm, right? So, of course, we know John the Baptist, right? He's proclaiming, he's the messenger sent to proclaim the coming of the Lord. So, of course, his heart is firm, I, I would say, right? So, what, what did you go out to the desert? A reed swayed by the... No, no. Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing, li living luxuriously, living living uh, an, an easy life? No, no, no. Of course not, right? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. And we know that John was in the desert, that he wore, he wore a shirt with camel's hair and he ate locusts and wild honey, right? We know this. Um, then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way for you. This comes from Malachi chapter 3. I, I can't remember when it was, but maybe it was last weekend. Referring to Malachi, right? Malachi is the last official prophet in the scriptures. And, and Malachi chapter 3 is, well, depending on the, the version of the scriptures that you're reading, Malachi is the last chapter or, or some... Some different translations add chapter 4, but just kind of break up chapter 3 differently. But whatever, it's, it's the last chapter. So the very next, so behold, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way, your way for you. Then the very next line, it says this, And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Right? So it's like, okay, who's, who's coming? I'm going to send my messenger to prepare the way. And then suddenly... The one who's coming after the preparation is complete is the Lord himself, L-O-R-D, in capital letters. That is, for, for, the, for the Jewish people in the Old Testament scriptures, they write out the word Lord in capital letters. Anytime it, the, the word there is actually the divine uh, tetragrammaton is what it's called, uh, Yahweh, right? The divine name given to Moses himself. For them, it's, it's such a sacred name that they won't even write it out, but they'll just replace it with this word Lord. So in other words, who's coming after the messenger is Yahweh himself the almighty God, <laughs> right? Like this, this is who's coming. And so Jesus is saying, this is the one about whom it was written. This is it, right? He is the one. So, so, what, so then what's fascinating, right? Is like, you went out to see a prophet. Of course you went out to see a prophet because there hasn't been an official prophet of the Lord. There's probably been other prophets, other people prophesying, but there hasn't been an official prophet of the Lord since the time of Malachi, which was something like 400 years, 400 years ago. So now, now John the Baptist shows onto the, comes onto the scene to do what? To prepare. He is the messenger that was promised by the Lord in the very last prophet book of the Bible. It's incredible. So then, of course, Jesus says to you, Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. He's talking about, like, John is, is this, he's, 
right? He's, he's this bridge, this, this incredible bridge uh, between the old covenant and the new covenant. John, of course, is he's, he's paving the way from the old into the new. So he's not yet into the new covenant. So that's why Jesus can say, among those born of women, there has been none greater. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. In other words, yet the one who has received, even the least one who's received the new covenant that I have come to give is greater than he. And of course, we know that, I mean, when John, John really dies before Jesus establishes the new covenant. But nonetheless, we know that, that he believed in Jesus. And we know that, that we, we call him Saint John the Baptist today, right? Because, because by his death, by his martyrdom, his witnessing to the truth, uh, he, in, he entered into the new covenant uh, with Jesus when Jesus, you know, he dies, dies, goes into hell and ascends into heaven to unlock the gates of heaven to, to, bring, to bring the souls of the faithful departed into heaven with him, into eternal glory, right, into the kingdom of heaven. But, but nonetheless, that's, that's what's going on here is, is that Jesus is talking about how John is, he's forging the way, he's, he's paving the bridge, however, whatever, whatever term you want to say. Uh, he's making the way from the old covenant into the new covenant. And so being that figure, right, which is a monumental thing to be, right, this monumental figure, he is the herald of the new covenant that is to come. Uh, and, and so because of that, none greater, none greater, yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is in his current state, right? So that's that's uh, that's what's going on. It's just it's so it's so beautiful, so wonderful, um, to uh, to just sort of see everything play out, you know, like to see the prophecies fulfilled, to see Jesus uh, talking about John the Baptist, his cousin, in in this particular way, this this beautiful way of like, yeah, but this is this is the messenger sent by the Lord, and and I am the Lord, you know, like I'm. It's incredible. So good. All right, you guys. Well, I hope I hope this is helpful for you. I hope uh, when you go to Mass on Sunday that it's something that can really help the Scriptures come alive in a new way and, uh, and, and that together we can encounter the Lord in the Word and in the sacrament uh, as we come together to worship. Okay, God bless you.